Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cynthia if you're new here and today I just want to talk about a series that is semi-criminally underrated, not yet finished, and got me out of my Akatar reading slump, which says a lot because if I thought my fourth ween reading slump was bad, my Akatar reading slump was so much worse. So without wasting too much time, welcome if you're new here and let's just dive right in. The series in question is a Kingdom of Lies series by Stasia Stark. I do have a copy of the first book, which is A Court This Cruel and Lovely. The second book is A Kingdom This Cursed and Empty. The third book is A Crown This Cold and Heavy. And the fourth book in the series, which publishes May 30th, 2024, is A Queen This Fierce and Deadly. I did also just want to put a little preface, a little disclaimer, that while three of the four books are published, I have thus far only read the first two. The second book ended on a cliffhanger and I needed a minute. I was a little upset. <laughs> so I just needed a minute. I do plan to read the third book before the fourth book is published and continue the series. So this video will focus on the first and the second book. Maybe in a couple of months once the fourth book is out and I've read the third and the fourth book, I will do a follow-up video talking about the third and the fourth book in the series and just wrapping everything up really nicely. And like I mentioned, I do have a copy of the first book. I was thrifting with a friend and I found it and I was very excited. She's not really a reader so she didn't understand but I understand and sometimes it's all that matters. But in a court this cruel and lovely, we meet our main character, Prisha. Prisha lives in a small town where when humans are born, they are stripped of their powers by the gods. But, but by relinquishing their power at birth to the gods, the gods have in turn promised to protect them from the Fae. And a human who hides their powers is considered corrupt and they are burned. It's kind of, it gives like witchy vibes. And Prisha, our main character, has been harboring a dark secret. One that quickly becomes uncovered and she finds herself fleeing from the small village she once called home. And and to survive, she makes a deal with a mercenary, the same mercenary whose green eyes have haunted her in her dreams. And when she finally meets him, he leaves her for dead. Despite this lovely introduction to said mercenary, Persia does begin to form a relationship with the group of mercenaries as she travels with them in order to essentially find new footing and find new bearings. But Persia ends up uncovering secrets, not only about herself, but secrets that could unravel the lives of those she loves and of the kingdom. So let's get into thoughts because I have a lot of thoughts. Okay, I'm also going to put this book down because it is a little heavy. My arm is getting a little tired, but if you read the actual summary of this book, it pretty much sums up how the book starts. Prisha is haunted by this man she doesn't know who has intense green eyes and he leaves her for dead. And that's pretty much what happens in the beginning of the book. There's not a lot of mystery, but it still is very, very intriguing. And the summary is the main reason why I read this book. I read that summary and I was sold. I wanted to know what happened. I wanted to know who this guy was. <laughs> and I just, I was sold. I was in. The pacing was a little weird in this book. It would be a little slow at times and then it would really speed up and like pick up and the plot would whoo, just take off. And I didn't really like that, but that's not really here nor there to say. And the world building, we didn't get too much world building, but I kind of liked that because I didn't feel confused or overwhelmed. It was very clear that like the humans kind of lived up north and the Fae kind of lived in the south and then there was the continent somewhere over if you borrow the book there's a map and you'll understand what I'm rambling about but it was nice that we got kind of like an intro to the world building but we weren't overwhelmed with a lot of information and there wasn't really any like info dumping to speak in terms of world building. There are also a lot of twists and turns in this book. I think a smarter person could have picked up on the, the plot twists at the end. I am not the smartest person in the room so I didn't fully see it coming. I kind of had a little bit of an inkling but I didn't think too hard about it if I'm being honest and the twist and turns in this book really set up the twist and turns for like the series. I feel like it's just kind of like the vibe of the series, so to speak. There's lots of twists, lots of turns, lots of like, <gasps> <laughs> kind of reactions to things. This book, the characters were a little bit hard to connect with and the second book kind of puts it into perspective of the first book, but because you don't know that yet, the characters seem hard to connect with and that's because we don't know a lot about them. There is a really nice sense of found family within this book, but like I said, we don't know too much about the characters and I think that's partially because without like spoiling anything the characters really don't know too much about themselves either so we the readers are kind of learning with the characters learning more about them and their pasts and there's just there's a lot to unpack and there's a lot to uncover. This book has the found family trope which I found I really enjoyed. It also has the one horse trope which I didn't even know that I liked but 
now I know I like the one horse trope. So if you have any recommendations for a one horse trope, please send them my way. But <laughs> this book also has a big like enemies to lovers vibe, but it could also be classified as reluctant allies to lovers vibes because even though they are sort of enemies, they're not really like enemies enemies. So I would say enemies to lovers is a little bit loose. I'd say it's probably 50-50 between enemies to lovers and reluctant allies to lovers and both of those tropes I like so I was cool with that. Something I also really liked about this book is that Prisha really evolves as a character. She doesn't really remain stagnant but I also think it would have been hard for her character to remain the same throughout the whole book just because so much changes from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. Prisha really just had to change with what was happening but I like that her change was for the better. She had a lot of good character development, which I really appreciated. And Lorian, our love interest, he's a little bit of a brute. <laughs> he's not quite as like suave as Rezand is, but I, he grew on me. I still really like him, but he's definitely a little brutish. <laughs> He reminds me quite a bit of Eric Bloodstainer from the Eversea series, the Ever King and the Ever Queen, but that's what makes him unique. And just some last little tidbit notes that I jotted down. There were so many like magical abilities in this book between the humans and the Fae, and I just, I was so fascinated. I wanted to know more. I really wanted to deep dive more into like the history of the magical abilities, but that's just because I'm a nerd for magical abilities. That's more of a preference thing. If you're not super invested in a magical system within a book, then this really Really won't affect you. And this book is spicy. It was very nice. There's a lot of like tension and flirtation and there's a few scenes that will make your cheeks a little red uh, leading up to the actual spice in the book but it was chef's kiss. It was so good. I really enjoyed it and yeah I ended up giving this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars and even looking back on it I still agree with that rating because I had such a good time and like I said this book pulled me out of my Akatar reading slump. Any book that can pull me out of my reading slump of that like size deserves high marks and high praise. But yeah book one was very enjoyable. I really liked it. I would recommend it to you if you like fantasy, enemies to lovers, allies to lovers, one horse trope, found family. If you're kind of into the whole the character is set up one way but then secrets are uncovered and we're just kind of kind of learn with them as we go kind of storytelling. I think this will be right up your alley if you like spicing your books, if you like Faye. I would recommend this book even if you don't continue the series which I will touch on why I stopped the series temporarily in a moment but it was a really good book. I had a really good time and like I said like five times now it got me out of my Akatar reading slump so if that doesn't tell you enough then I don't know if I can say anything else that'll convince you. So with book one wrapped up let's move on to book two. Okay so in book two we pretty much pick up where the events of book one left off and Prisha is going through it. She has uncovered the truth about Lorian. She's uncovered a lot of the truth about herself. She's feeling very betrayed and I think in this book she's really just shaken. She's shaken to her core with everything that she's learning. Also some of the more like side characters in the first, in the first book get upgraded to more of like a main character status in the second book which is interesting. We get a POV from the queen. We also read more about the king and yeah that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but there's just a lot of scheming going on. There's a lot of dark history. There's a lot of dark undertones going on within the central plot with the characters. And we actually travel to the Feylands in this book and we meet Lorian's brother, which is beyond fascinating. And it was really just nice to not only uncover more about the characters, but to also kind of world build a little bit more because now we've left the human lands and we are in the Feylands. So let's get into thoughts on book two. So I will say right out of the gate, I did struggle with book two a little bit more than I did with book one, just because the plot is still really strong in my opinion, but, and I really, really, really liked learning about the history and getting to see more of like the world building, like I said, but this book was a little bit repetitive in some areas, which is a little disappointing. 
especially when it came to Prisha and Lauren. And the pacing was very similar to the first book in that it would get a little slow and then it would really pick up and then it would kind of get slow again and then it would pick back up. And it was very much a push and pull kind of situation with the pacing. And like I briefly mentioned earlier, the cliffhanger, to be honest, it pissed me off because I was reading a lot of books at the time where the first or second book in the series were ending on these really just like over the top dramatic cliffhangers. And I was just at a point where I was getting so fed up because it was like, I clearly like this book. I don't understand why you have to hurt me this way. And yeah, I just, I needed a minute to process and read a book that didn't end in a terrible cliffhanger. And now that I've had some time to process, I am ready to get back to the series. But the cliffhanger really threw me for a loop and it really upset me. The cliffhanger itself was also kind of upsetting. <laughs> and so I just, I just needed a minute, but we're good. We're good. I'm gonna get back into book three. We're gonna finish the series. We're gonna go out with a bang. But like I also mentioned earlier as well, we do also get the queen's POV in this book and <sighs> I didn't really like it. Personally, I think we could have done without the Queen's POV because we do have Prisha and Lauren's POV and I just thought the Queen's POV didn't really add anything like extra to the story. And so I felt like her POV really just could have been left out and the story just would have continued on like normal. And the side characters from the first book that weren't upgraded to main characters in the second book but remain side characters in the second book, I really like that we get to know more about them. Some of the mercenaries, one has a little baby and we get to see his family dynamic when he's reunited with them in the Fey lands and it's also interesting to see how the Fey take to Prisha because she is not Fey, she is human, but she's not a normal human, you know, she's a special girl, but... <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. But it was just really interesting to get a look into, you know, the side characters and get to know more about them and also to kind of see how things work in the Fey lands. Cause you know, in the first book, we're in the human lands where there's a lot of like, like I said earlier, it felt very like witchy, you know, like if you don't give up your power, you're considered corrupt and you're burned. And you know, it just, it's very interesting. But one thing I really didn't like, and I'm trying not to spoil these books, but it's so hard to like talk about them and not spoil things. At some point during the second book, I think about halfway through, give or take, Lorian discovers something about Prisha and he doesn't tell her. The readers are, are told how rare this is and how special it is and then he just doesn't say jack shit and I'm just like, I don't know man, you, you should say something. You know, you should probably say something. Like I know Prisha's going through a lot in this book and she does regress a little bit, which is also something that I didn't like, but I did understand. So I didn't like hold it against the book. And I'm really hoping that in book three, we get back <laughs> that character development for Prisha because we need it. I really wanted Lorian to share what he thinks he discovered with her because it is also a big impact on her as well. And I don't think him keeping it from her was fair to her, to Prisha. But anyway, all in all, I did enjoy the second book. Not as much as I enjoyed the first book, but I did enjoy the second book. The, the story was very strong. I liked the plot. I liked the characters. There was also quite a bit of spice, which was nice. It wasn't, it wasn't one of those things where like the first book has like a little bit of spice and then the second book just explodes with spice. It wasn't like that at all, which was very nice. But the spice did feel a little bit repetitive, which kind of sucked because... I mean, Lorian has room to play. Like, we could do something else, you know? But... <laughs> But other than that, it was a good book. I did enjoy it. I will also say there wasn't a straight up like miscommunication trope, but there was a lot of lack of communicating between Lorian and Prussia, which I really, really didn't like. I really, really didn't like it. And I do understand that they're both going through a lot. There's a lot happening, especially with Prussia. She's uncovering so many things. And I can't even imagine what that's like to go from thinking you knew everything about your life to your life being turned upside down. But <laughs> I still wanted them to talk, you know? But overall, I am gonna continue the series. I'm really excited to get back into the series. Like talking about it kind of made me miss that world and these characters. And even though the second book wasn't as, I can't think of the right word, but even though the first book wasn't as much of a hit with me as the first book was, it still gets a solid four stars out of five stars. And I just, I really enjoyed the first two books in this series and I've continued and I'm just ready to get back to it and see how it ends. But other than that, I don't really have anything else to add. This was a very good series. I definitely recommend it. The books are on Kindle Unlimited. And like I said, I found 
this copy at a thrift store. I was so shocked. I'm like, did you not like it? I'm, I wanna know why this was at a thrift store. But their loss was clearly my gain, so. If you haven't read this series, I would definitely recommend it. And like I said, they are on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription, then fantastic. Go download them. Have a good time. You're welcome. And if you don't have a Kindle Unlimited subscription, I would recommend getting one if it's within your budget because I got my Kindle Unlimited subscription and I never looked back. I even recently bought a Kindle. That's how much I was enjoying my Kindle Unlimited subscription. And reading on my iPad just wasn't cutting it anymore. <laughs> so with all that being said, if you haven't read the series, I definitely recommend the series if you are in an Akatar reading slump or any sort of fantasy romance reading slump, I would definitely give this series a try because you never know. In a few months, I will have a follow-up for books three and four, so I'm very excited about that. But otherwise, that's all I've got. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!